Hello everybody, today I'm installing rubber protective half soles, uh, glue on, and I'm trying to do it in a little more elegant manner than I've done before, okay? So let's go. Hello everybody, it's Robert Powers. Four and a half out of five. My shoe collection. Some stains there. Let's get a nice lather. Here is the finished product. I'm not a professional. How tight this is though. You can see it very clearly here. I just cut the thread. So here it goes. Now that's a proper mirror shine. We're both done. Doesn't it look awesome? Hello everyone, so if you're a fan of my channel, you may already know that I'm a friend, a fan of rubber protective half soles. So traditional men's dress shoes come here, you know, come with the leather uh, soles on them. Uh, the leather soles are elegant, they're beautiful, um, and it's, uh, I don't want to call it snobbery, but there's a little bit of a, you know, thing where if you start to really get into men's dress shoes, you'll find yourself looking when men walk at the bottoms of the shoes you know, it's generally speaking, if you see a real leather sole on a dress shoe, you know, that's another indication that it's a high quality dress shoe, okay? Um, so, but what I've done in the past, like with my McAllister's here, Allen Edmonds McAllister's, um, these are the Goodyear rubber protective half soles, okay? And they're very functional. And I would consider an Allen Edmonds shoe, Goodyear welted, you know, shoe like this, um, a very functional shoe, you know? In other words, it's a pretty sturdy shoe. Okay, here's Allen Edmonds. Uh, this would be the Fifth Avenue here, right? And again, I've done the same thing because for me, I, I do wear these shoes outside. I live in the you know Midwest United States where we get winter, where there's snow, you know, and water a large portion of the year. And I do walk around outside a lot. I'm not just in an office, you know. So this for me is you know a kind of a necessity. Um, but I'm going to do it in a little bit different fashion today. And the protective soles, um, I already actually stuck them on, um, but the the brand, I don't know if you can even see on there. Um, on the piece that's left. It's K brand, um, K is in kilo and then brand. Um, I actually got them from eBay and I'll put in a, a link in the description below on where I got them from. I think they're about $5 and change plus shipping uh, to get them. These are really only, it says between 1.1 to 1.3 millimeters thick. Um, so that's gonna be around 45, 50 thousandths or a little less than a 16th of an inch. A 16th of an inch is like 60, uh, uh, 62 thousandths. So, um, basically, I feel that this is a little more elegant way. In other words, I just, I don't know, this is an English-made shoe. If you remember this shoe from the Kilgore, French, and Stanberry video, uh, I, I just, uh, I just couldn't really bring myself to cover up that thing with the, uh, I, I don't know, maybe the um, idea of leather soles, um, you know, without a protective half sole is growing on me. I have enough pairs of shoes now where if I'm uh, going to be outside a lot, I can avoid these shoes. Um, as if you noticed here, my polo shoes, I have not, they figure, uh, feature hidden channel stitching. Um, I have avoided putting uh, the rubber protective half soles on these. It's just too pretty. You know, I can't bring myself to do it. You know, this is a piece of art right here. So um, I generally try to avoid wearing these shoes when I have to be outside a lot and just don't wear them when it's wet. You know, so um, these are probably one of my favorite pair of dress shoes. So I guess the idea is growing on me um, and I'm going to show you how I did it here. Okay, so uh, let's get started. Now here what we're seeing on the bottom of the sole, I just simply took some uh, blue masking tape, covered the sole. If you can see, I kind of overlapped it 50% uh, just so that when I peel it off, uh, it comes off in one sheet, okay? If I would have used the wider tape, it would have been better. And if you can see around the outside, I just took my, my fingernail, my thumbnail, and I pressed in an indentation where the channel is, where the stitching is. So what I was trying to do here, if you can see, I drew a line and right now I'm cutting on the line. I drew a line just inside the indentation left by the channel in which the stitching lays inside, okay? So now that line that I'm cutting uh, over top of with the X-Acto knife, uh, what that winds up doing is making that edge just a little bit inside of the channel, which is what I wanted. So basically what I wanted to do here was uh, put on a rubber half sole and uh, basically still be able to see the stitching and have that rubber half sole just a little bit inside of the, of the channel, okay? Um, so you can see here, this is sped up about six times. So, you know, it's probably not as dangerous as you think it is. And, you know, I've worked with exacto knives all my life. So if you peel this off in the correct direction in the direction opposite of the overlap, it'll come off in one sheet and there it comes off in a sheet. So now what I have is a template that is the exact pattern of the, um, both the area that I want to glue onto, uh, as well as the exact shape of the rubber half sole. 
Okay, so this part here, basically I'm just taking it, laying it over top of the rubber half sole. Uh, there's a little spot there uh, that I had to flatten out. And I'm just going to basically uh, double check the fit, make sure that it, you know, makes sense, I guess. And uh, just, uh, you know, take a pair of scissors, trim it out, um, and then I should have the shape of the... Uh, rubber half sole exactly as I want it. And here's the important part with the masking tape. I really didn't need the masking tape to cut that shape. But what this gives me now is an area that's masked off for the glue. That's why the tape on the shoe is important. The tape on the shoe is important because I don't want to put glue on the parts of the sole that are not going to have a half sole on it, if that makes sense. So you'll see what I'm talking about here in a second. So now I need to create another one for the other side that's, uh, you know, as uh, symmetrical as I can get it. Now this was uh, probably not the brightest thing here. I could have just taken the rubber half sole itself and flipped it upside down. That would have been much easier to trace as it's much stiffer. But anyway, this still worked. So same thing on the other shoe, um, you know, trace it and uh, cut it out to size. And then you should have two equal but opposite shapes. Um, and we'll just, uh, you know, hang in here for another couple seconds. This is sped up, so it's going to go along pretty quickly. So, you know, this is up to you how far up the toe. I debated on how far forward um, I wanted the rubber half sole to extend um, because it, the farther forward it goes, the more it's going to protect the toe of the shoe. And that's one of the first places that the threads are going to wear through. So I, I kind of um, did extend the... Uh, the template a little bit forward almost onto the threads at the front of the shoe okay so now um, again test fitting and uh, the next step is going to really basically just be to to glue the the two halves together so again the weld wood contact cement is what i use um, this has worked pretty well now if i were a professional cobbler this would be a problem because i have had the back edge uh you know the the back closer to the heel um, i have had sometimes a rubber protective half soles peel back off which you know just be me being a home guy doing it for myself is not a big deal i'll just take the can out touch it up um you know and glue it back down uh, but that would be a problem if I was a professional, you know, because then people would be bringing stuff in for returns. So I don't know what kind of glue the cobblers use, if they use something that's stronger. Um, but, you know, I elected not to sand the soles. I don't think it needed it. They were already roughed up, number one. Number two, I found that um, if you, for example, sand into the leather soles, that it actually uh, um, hurts the adhesion. I think what happens when you sand or cut into the leather is that it becomes more porous and it absorbs the glue and it does not seem to stick as well. So um, I found with a lightly worn like this is kind of an ideal scenario to get the glue to adhere. Okay, now here's the first shoe and it is tacked up quite a bit, you know. Um, you just follow the directions on the can and um, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to move the camera. Okay, there we go.
the, the this shoe here, the tip is overlapping a little more. I could take the exacto knife and trim it. In other words, I can see the this shoe here. I can see the threads at the toes here. I can't. But, uh, you know, you have to be about three inches away from the shoe to see that. You know, if someone gets that close to my shoe, you're gonna kick them. <laughs> What do you guys think? Is that a little more elegant solution? All right, thank you very much. Leave your comments below. If you'd like to subscribe, feel free to do so. Hit that notification bell so you'll be notified when I come out with new videos. And uh, I'll see you guys later. God bless. Have a great day.